And this week, our episode is sponsored by JCPenney Salon with guest Dariella Montaño. Dariella is a master stylist with JCPenney with seven years experience as a hairstylist and five years working for JCPenney Salon. She specializes in all types of hair coloring, treatments, and haircuts. Her goal is always to cover all of her clients' needs, keeping their hair healthy. She joins us to talk about her journey to JCPenney Salon and what it's like being a stylist in this franchise. Hi, Dariella. How's it going? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm so good. So excited for you to be here with us. I'm thrilled that we're going to be talking about all things your background as well as JCPenney Salon. So if you wouldn't mind, let's get started with a little bit of background. How did you get to the salon professional industry? So going back five years ago, um, so I was working at another salon. It was awful. I worked there for a year. It was the worst thing, like I swear. And my manager there, um, she left, like it was that bad. So she left and she resigned. So I stayed at that salon for a little bit and she was like, hey, I'm working at JCPenney Salon. You should come and apply. And I was like, well, she's my old manager. She, you know, she knows what she's doing. That's, there was a reason why she left here. And I started the application. It was super easy. The, the staff was super nice to me. And I don't know, I had just hope that I was going to be hired. And um, I did. Actually, the next day they were like, when can you start? And I was like, well, okay, thank you. I'm excited. So that's how everything started. It was literally like so fast, so easy. And the people were so nice. So I just went there. I I got me like a good feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, we love a good vibe, Um, especially for a career. All right. So talking about the good vibes, how did you arrive at being a hairstylist like what was the situation did you always knew you were going to go to hair um what was cosmo school like for you talk to us a little bit about that too so literally like it's crazy since i've been born i knew that i was going to be a hairstylist like i knew it so my family oh my dad's side of the family they all know how to do hair so imagine like christmas being there you know all the family getting haircuts highlights (laughs) in the middle of the kitchen like it was a whole salon the whole time so yes. I remember being a kid and like watching that and be like, oh, the hair lifts this way. And then d- doing all the highlights and all of that. And uh, I don't know, it got my attention. I think it's in my blood, my family, mm-hmm. um, all the boys, my cousins, they're all barbers and my girls, they're all hairstylists. So I'm the first one in the family that I'm a barber and I'm a hairstylist. So it's been great. Like since I, since I got to high school, I remember the first day of high school, I told my counselor, I don't know what you need to do, but I want to go to cosmetology school. Like I want to go into Cosmo. So I was like, I don't know what classes you need to fix there, but um, put me in because I want to go to Cosmo. That's amazing. Talk to us a little bit about that. Um, so, I mean, you addressed it, which is that sometimes uh, thinking about cosmetology school as a option is stigmatized. People don't necessarily consider it as an option, uh, which is a huge mistake. It's a travesty, honestly. Um, What do you say to people who are thinking, maybe they're in high school, I want to go to cosmetology school. Like, what's your advice for them? How do you like psych them up, hype them to to get into this field? Just follow your heart. Like, uh, I think being a hairstylist and going into cosmo school is more into like passion. If you have passion Mm -hmm. for the topic or whatever you decide to do in life, like it's going to work out, believe me, because there's, I mean, in any profession, there's, you know, you bump into things and you make mistakes, it's totally normal. But if you love what you do, you're ready to go the next day and try harder and harder and harder. And I think um, people don't take cosmetology school that um, seriously, you know, they don't, they don't see it as a profession. I struggle with that when I was in high school too. I remember just wanting to leave uh, to complete my hours in high school. So, um, I will be like, can I leave a little bit earlier to my teachers? And they, they will like tell me straight up, like, so that's what you want to do with your life? You're going to be a hairstylist? And I will be so offended. And I, I was like, I always tell them, like, I'm going to be the best hairstylist. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know what you think of me. Like, honestly, I this is what I love. This is what I do. I never like was hyped about school, but mm-hmm. um, I was doing, you know, good. And I was never a bad student. But the way that they um, address being a hairstylist and being part of the Cosmo, um, family um I didn't like that I didn't appreciate that and fast forward five years later those are my clients they have my clients and they're giving me money 
those two uh, things. Mic drop moment. Ah, oh, Dariella, yes. we love that. Uh, I mean, there's no better revenge, if, if revenge is the way to put it. Um, oh, really? love that. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Uh, talk to us. You you had mentioned a mentor, uh, someone who would encourage you to come over to JC Penny Salon. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the importance of mentorship. Who is your mentor? How do you find mentors? We have a lot of listeners who don't know where to start. They hear it's important, but you know need help. Yeah. So for mentors, like I will say, always try to go whatever you work at uh, any JC Penny. Try to stick with people that have been there the most time. You know, the seniors, the masters um those they're the ones that know like how everything worked um that's how I learned everything mm -hmm. my my team was like you know my backup always mm -hmm. since day one I remember the first day that I walked into JC Penny um I had a color color retouch so I didn't know where the bowls were and I was so nervous <laughs> I was like this is new to me and my first thing clocked in like I already have a color like it was shocking for me so first day the whole team was like don't worry, we got you. Here are the things. Do you need anything? So I, since day one, I really felt that backup. And I think that's really, really important just because um, they made me feel really comfortable since day one, first minute on the clock. Um, that's why I, I just was excited, you know, to keep going and learning because it was like a learning experience since day one. And JCPenney offers a lot of learning experiences, the classes and all of that. So they really build you up like a great hairstylist. So if you're willing to um, learn and absorb all the knowledge from other stylists and your team that it works with you, promise, I promise you that it's going to work out and you're going to be the best hairstylist and you're going to have fun doing it. That's the most important thing because it is a job, right? But mm -hmm. we want to have fun. Like that's the thing we do or the most every day. So I really appreciate that from my team uh, back home and I still do over here. So I just think it's great. It's like a family that are we gonna cheer you up and hug you whenever you need and give you the advice sometimes. Sometimes we need a slap in our face, like, hey, wake up, you <laughs> you got this, you got this, you can do it. And I think I got I felt that um encouragement at JC Penny, totally. Ugh, ugh, I, well, I'm jealous. I want that. Um talk to <laughs> us about what inspires you sort of day to day behind the chair. I love about this profession, I love that you never stop learning. So there's mm. always something new. There's always a new trend that is going to come back. Right now, the mullet is a big thing, you know. We came back, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, I had it for said, a minute. I'm all about yeah. it. My eye roll is that oh, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's not it's going here. anywhere. So it's like a cycle. Everything's a cycle. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, Cosmo School, they didn't teach us a lot about perms. Because they were like, those are for old ladies. I don't think you guys, you guys are too young, you know, like, to learn that. And we did practice. No, fast forward two years. Right now, the perm from guys is like the mm -hmm. most famous thing. Fades with the perm, you know, the volume. Yep. And I love that, you know? And I love that Um, you never start learning. Like, there's always one one thing. The bus cuts with the, the signs, with the bleach and the color, all the fantasy colors. For me, that's so exciting. So every time, like, a client, hey, I have this idea. I get like, ah, I get so happy because... Like I get to do something new, you know, like it's exciting. That's that's the main thing. Yeah. It sounds like the dream. All right. Let's talk about JCPenney Salon specifically. Uh, you had mentioned how you came on board, uh, but let's really dive into it. Um, how did you first hear about JCPenney Salons um, and what was the process like to get hired? So JCPenney for me, it's always been since I was really small, we would always go to JCPenney, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas gifts, all of that. But I never knew they had a salon. You know, yeah. I was small. I was I was not into hair that much, but this video was like a very special thing for my family. I don't know. It felt like uh, all the important gifts we will buy them at this penny. So um, whenever I was working with my old manager, you know, um, <laughs> in another salon, she was the one who worked at JC Penny like for 25 years when she was young. That's where she started. Mm. So um, she left JC Penny uh, and started working at her own salon. And then she went back to JCPenney whenever um, I was there, you know, whenever we bumped into life and I met her and she was like, you know what? My go-to is always JCPenney because she already knew how it worked, the system, you know, the flexibility and all of that. So she was pretty sure that she was going to succeed there. And she encouraged me. And first thing, like I'm telling you, she told me like, you should come and apply. I'm pretty sure they're hire you and I'm recommending you and I trust her. So that's that was my first approach to the salon and mm -hmm. I'm really happy that happened because 
no, where am I? <laughs> I mean, exactly. No. Uh, so talk to us about the master stylist certification. How did that happen? How did you get there? Um, how does this, for someone who's interested in becoming a master stylist for JCC Penny Salon, how does this happen for them? It took me probably like a year and a half to be a master. They asked me, um, do you have any clientele so we can put you like a senior master? I, I had no mm -hmm. idea what that meant. So I told them like, no, I can start like from the bottom. Like I literally mm -hmm. told them like, I want to start from the bottom. So they were like, yeah, okay. So fast forward like six months, I was producing a lot. I had a lot of clientele. I was building my clientele. They were helping me building my clientele. And they were forming me a little bit into consultations, creating a relationship with my client. So um, that's how it started. And then they gave me the promotion to senior. And I was like, what's this? And they were like, oh, okay, so it's like the next level. Your prices are mm -hmm. going to go a little bit up. You have more flexibility. So my eyes just went like, what? Like, this is not over. You know, it's more. And it was like addictive. Like, I just wanted to be more and more and more. And, um, you know, of course, you're always reaching to, for the master, for the flexibility of your schedule. You make your own mm -hmm. schedule. You um, create your own prices. It, everything's more flexible. The responsibility is not all into you but you make the decisions. So that's why I always encourage like, just to go and be a master. You can produce, don't be, um, don't get, you know, sad if you don't, you're not building your clientele really fast. It took me a year and a half. I mean, it, it's mm. not, it's nothing that happens overnight, but your clients are going to be back. Your clients are going to be asking for you. And that's how um, I became more like a master. Incredible. So you've been at JCPenney for a number of years now. We talked about that at the top of the pod. Um, reflecting back, like what has been the most compelling reason to stay? I think it's so comfortable working there. Mm. You know, it's super comfortable because one, you have the backup. You have the, the product, the good quality product. You have the flexibility of the hours. Any day that I've asked, always they always say yes as long as you know with the time two weeks and notice yep. um my vacation my pto the benefits um everything is just like so perfect and so organized that you just need to do your work and and they'll give everything that you ask for i've never had a trouble you know fighting over any hey you're not gonna give me my days you just have to be organized with your clients mm -hmm. and you know um try to fix like a time tell them in advance that you're not gonna be there um, and that's it. Like they make everything so easy for you. And if you have communication with your clients, with your manager, with your team, everything will go by so smooth and it's so easy. So I totally encourage people to apply and go for the masters, go for America's best, all the opportunities they'll give you. They invite you to podcast. They, um, they do amazing things for you. So you never stop learning. Never. Oh, we love that. Uh, talk to us about your coworkers. I mean, you've mentioned them a few times in terms of like being a family. They've got your back. They're cheering you on. They're there for a hug. Uh, what's it like working with, you know, the team at JCPenney Salon? It's just incredible. I mean, just like everything, I see them. I literally see them more than my family because we're there all the time. No, I, I was going to say that's crazy, but no, it's absolutely right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happened. And I always tell them like, um, do you guys realize that I see you more than my family? So you guys are literally <laughs> like my family. Yeah. So we eat together, we go to lunch together, we, mm -hmm. we see each other every morning, every night, we've seen it at our best, bad days, good days, you know, we're always there. So um, it's just great to, you know, have someone that you know that is going to be always there for you. And uh, you don't know the shock in my career that has been um, having them in my life. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, that without them, honestly, a team, a hairstylist without a team is like, nothing you know so sometimes we do need uh, that encouragement that uh, time when you're with the client you know you're like I don't know what's gonna happen with the hair and your team is like come on you can do it don't, don't mm -hmm. worry about it like do this uh, they um, tell you tips and they tell you what to do what not to do so it's like a whole like a team back you know mm -hmm. um, having like a lot of little minds that are telling you like what to do and and you get information from everyone is just like being a sponge so I really, mm. really, I'm glad that I have my team and that I'm glad that um, it's been going so well for like five years. Yeah, still no, there. incredible. <laughs> still there um, and still sticking around. 
talk to us yeah. about the process of establishing clientele. So, I mean, you had said, you know, it took a year and a half to become a master stylist. You were working on building up your clientele. Um, is it mostly the responsibility of the stylist? Uh, are there walk-ins? Like, what does a day in the life look like for you at JC Penny Salon? So I do have my regulars that I've um, had for a while. Mm -hmm. And then um, I try to fit in walkings because you never stop building your clientele. Yep. If you stop, you're you're putting like a wall on top mm -hmm. of, you know, like you're just uh, blinding yourself to do so much. So I always try to fit in people, you know, um, referrals are always, I always tell my clients, I really appreciate the referrals mm -hmm. and just, it's just building a relationship with your clients and they're like your family too. You, you have heard their problems. I've heard they know their families and you know the mom and then you know the daughter and you know like all their lives because that's the time where they go and relax you know and talk about their life and I'm always there to listen to them and I think that's why um, creating that relationship it's really like um, a big impact in that building clientele because you're always there for them they're mm -hmm. always there for you um, they will always be there and they're so flexible honestly um it's so easy to build up clients just if you like it, if you like to talk to people, if you remember them, like it's a whole process because at the beginning, mm -hmm. like I was, I was forgetting names too. And they were, you know, my, my name and it's kind of like a Spanish name. So it's hard to pronounce. And I try to make fun of them with them with it. And they love that. And they just, they always come back. So just always greet with a smile, you know, try to best to hold yourself together. And, mm -hmm. you know, we all have problems and just listen to them because that's the thing that they appreciate the most being listened. And you just, they just walk out with beautiful hair and looking all good and feeling good. That's the most important. <laughs> most importantly. So, yep. Yes. So that's how I did it. Oh, we love that. Uh, talk to us about, I mean, what does the JC penny salon look and feel like these days uh, because i think you know as you said maybe if you didn't know that there was a salon space within jc penny like you don't have the association um talk to us about what the suites look like uh what are the amenities uh for a stylist that's maybe interested in coming aboard so we have a lot of stations we have more than 30 stations probably at the salon uh we have a wax room a private room that we can you can use for facials eyelashes uh, right now we're going into an extension class. We're going to buy our kit of extensions. So wow. I'm telling you, you never stop learning. So um, Amazing. we have our shampoo bowls area. The salon is pretty big. So mm -hmm. all the space you need, you will have it. If you need, um, we have the drawers um, so you can put all of your stuff in. And of course, the back bar is like filled with the best products. That's what I love the most. <laughs> so... I love the brands. I'm a fan of like JCPenney brands. I love JCPenney. That's, I am always talking with my manager, like, thank God we have like really, really good products to offer to the clients because I've seen how other products work and I don't really like them that much, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's just like really good. All the space that you need, everything that you come into. Like I talked to my manager about the barber thing. I was like, can I start doing the barber? And she was like, yeah, let's get the license so we can start doing barber things. So they get excited for you too. If they see that initiative, you know, and, and you doing more, um, there's a girl that is just starting doing eyelashes and they just offer you every, every equipment that you need. So the, the, the backup is there. You will have it. You will have it. Oh, incredible. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a professional hairstylist at all. I want to sign up. Um, I need to get my license so that I can start working with JCP. So Let's go. Basically. You're hired. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about the the ugly, which has been COVID. Um, we've talked a lot about the the benefits of working with JCPenney Salon. Um, a lot of what independent stylists experienced was horrifying during COVID. Um, what was it like working with JCPenney Salon during the, the height of the pandemic? So it was hard. I'm not going to lie, just because we didn't know what was what was happening. That yeah. was the most hard part because we want to take care of the clients and, of course, of our health, too. But we have elderly clients, so we didn't want to put anyone at risk. Um, JCPenney, every step of protection, mm -hmm. we took it. Like, mm -hmm. I swear, we were disinfecting, like, every five minutes, every client. We were wearing gloves. We were wearing um, eyeglasses. We were wearing, like, a shield mask mm -hmm. so we were more than protected but um it was hard doing the services with the shield you know the little plastic was like yeah. moving I think that was just the only part the only ugly part that we needed to 
adjust to work around the face mask with the mm -hmm. clients and being having the face mask like seven hours a day because that's those are the hours that we're in the salon changing it every we were trying to change it every hour just because mm. we you know we're breathing the same um the same thing hour for hours so yep. for clients we would always offer them like a disposable one if they want to take it you know we didn't want to stain it with the color that mm -hmm. was the only challenge that work around it's like working with someone that has glasses you know it's kind of yep. hard you need to work around that so we already um kind of master that that skill working around the face mask but that was the only hard part and we were really just worried about how the clients were going to react to mm -hmm. that because we didn't want to lose them you know of course but we were just making sure that every little detail was covered about like disinfecting and for them to not have that many contact of course we had our space uh, between stations so we kind of spread a little bit more. The, mm -hmm. the schedules were a little bit more spread too. So we took care of everything and it went, it went really good, honestly. I'm really proud of the team because we follow um, every little, um, you know, rule and regulation mm -hmm. that it can mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. for that. And, and it worked. Uh, thank God in my salon, like not one client got infected there at least. So we were really proud That's of that. Yeah, no, as you should be. Uh, well, I mean, it is so nice that we're coming out on the other side that we're not needing to worry as much. Yes. Um, yeah, but certainly something that a lot of people dealt with. And it's always to hear sort of different takes from around the country. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about just being a hairstylist in general. So like enough about JCPenney Salon, which is fantastic. More about like what it is like to do what you do best. Uh, so what do you like, or what are you most passionate about in terms of hairstyling at the moment? I, the thing that I love the most is that the clients come in a certain way mm -hmm. and the smile that they have in their faces when they leave, just like charm, you know, that, um, I don't know, you see them really comfortable with themselves and that's what brings me peace. At least that's what brings me myself, um, like excitement, you know, that of my job that I like mm -hmm. that. It's like, it's like an addictive thing, like seeing them walk, <laughs> you know, like walking and being excited about the next time coming in so oh next time we can do this and they show you mm -hmm. the picture and I'm like I already have the formula for that so don't get me started let's like go. let's do yep. it right now it's it's like a passion like it it seeing that they get excited about their hair and how they're gonna look uh makes me happy and me being able to um to do that to you know being the one that makes their hair like beautiful mm -hmm. makes their hair their hair dreams come true of course always telling them the truth about the health of the hair taking care of the integrity of the hair uh you just need to be real with the client and they will totally understand always um i think that's what brings me like i don't know like a warm heart you know like because you see them like being excited and whenever you, they have a wedding and they mm. have the most amazing updo and whenever they're going to get married and they get the color the first day of school and that ninth grade girl she's getting the highlights for the first time that's like I don't know, like having a kid in their hair, you know, like, mm -hmm. here it goes, my name and my signature, and they loving it. It's just the best thing, the best gift. Ugh. Ugh. So, I mean, I'm, again, jealous. I'm jealous of this experience. I mean, it's so <laughs> nice to hear it from your end. I mean, obviously, as the recipient of services, I feel good, but it's nice to hear, you know, people like yourself talking about what it does for them, too. Um, yes. Speaking of the things that you need in order to execute your craft... What is a go-to tool for you? Like, what is the tried and true thing that you cannot get through your day without behind the chair? My holy grail, always heat protector. Always heat protector. Because that's mm. like a key product that we use to take care of the hair for it to look healthy. And uh, it gives you like a smooth finish. Either you're doing curls or straight or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite product is Kendra. I have like tons of it. Like even myself, I use it every day just because, you know, the sun, even the sun by itself is like very, very damaging to the hair. Yep. So I use it like one pump every day. The Kendra um, heat protector is amazing. It brings you the shine, the healthy look. It protects the hair. So you don't need anything more. That's my mm. key product that I always tell my clients, like, I don't know what you do. I don't know if, if you do an updo. I don't know if you do a color. You better take a heat you protector. Need this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Talk to us a little bit about footwear in the salon. So you talked about seven hour days. It can be more. There's lots of being on your feet. We understand this. What are you wearing? What kind of shoe gets you through the day? 
So I always try to wear comfortable shoes. Um, I know um, it looks great having like, you know, like those flats, heels, but mm-hmm. being on your feet like for seven hours plus and be walking around this, it's hard. So I try to keep it with my um, tennis shoes, uh, mm-hmm. you know, being professional, try to wear, wear all black or all white. Um, but I'm more of a, you know, being comfortable with myself so I can provide the best for my clients. Of course, always looking presentable, but Mm -hmm. um, the client is the most important thing. So if I'm good, I know the client and the result is going to be good. So I always try to just at least stay hydrated, try to go have my restroom breaks because you need to, you know, also have those and um, try to eat or have snacks. That's the best Mm -hmm. advice I can give you because it's hard to have like a full meal, you know, and have like an hour lunch. So at least like have a good breakfast in the morning or um, keep uh, drinking water throughout, throughout the day so you can, you know, keep talking to the clients and being up and down. But being comfortable, it's more of an important thing. And also, we are messy, you know, we're hairstylists. So every sh- black shirt that you see is going to be mm-hmm. staying the beach. Mm-hmm. So I always tell my clients, like, if you live here uh, looking good, I'm more than happy. Like, don't worry about me. I'll make my hair when I get home and like, it's mm-hmm. fine. Um, so yeah, I just try to stay comfortable in snacks and drink water. That's the best advice I can give you. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Holidays are coming up, crazily enough. I mean, the rush is about to start hitting. Uh, what is it like in your salon? Um, how booked up are you getting? Um, how do you stay sane? Talk to us about that. So of course, weekends are the most, we're packed on weekends. And even if you have um, appointments, you know for sure that you're going to have walk-ins. So you yep. need to prepare a little bit about that. That's why I mentioned earlier that you need to be organized because mm-hmm. you need to know how much time you take for each service. So let's say, um, I don't know, for a haircut and blow dry, you're going to take an hour, you know? So you need to know that in that hour, you're going to be busy like the whole hour mm-hmm. and the client's going to leave, you know, satisfied. Of course, it's going to depend if the client has more hair, it has less hair, you know, a lot of that. But you need to have like an established, you know, amount of time. You need to know your times. Uh, You need to be honest with yourself because you don't want to be like in a rush either because you want to, you know, have everyone happy with their hair and you're not going to do crappy work. (laughs) But um, that's the most important thing that has worked for me. Uh, Mm -hmm. Just being realistic with the time that I take. And then in between, you can always push it a little bit to take a little bit of walking so you can keep building that clientele. And they can, the clients will appreciate that a lot because they'll see that you're making an effort and um, they'll keep coming to you just because you're that dedicated to uh, to try to fit them into your schedule. Speaking of dedication, what is a current hair trend that you're really into these days with your clients? Like something that they're asking for. I mean, you would mention perms for guys, getting that volume. Like talk to us about what is exciting you trend-wise. So right now, um, the beach waves are a big thing. Everyone okay. wants to have that beachy weight, you know, because before the pros were like literally like a curl, just like so close. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tight the curl but right now with the beach waves they all want that you know like shine volume and like a little bit of messy right now Mm -hmm. I think what's trendy it's like being messy you know like people are like I didn't try that hard you know and they try Mm -hmm. to be like I I woke up like this and and the Mm -hmm. curls are looking more natural but um that's my go-to always and the clients love it because it's not that put together and they can recreate that at home it's mm-hmm. possible for them. So I try to teach them like how to keep recreating it at home and um, just for them to take the right product so they can use, the, they can be the same, you know, um, as the one that we do in the salon. But more of the, the beach waves and the perms totally are one of the number one thing right now for the guys. And um, the fades, fades with the perms are a huge thing right now. So um, those are my two favorite, my go-to, because they do can literally like see a big change when mm-hmm. you make them. Like the hair is so flat, and then you see the guy oh. like with all the curls, and he, he you see him feeling himself. So it's yeah. it's really really great. Uh, all right, talking about clients a little bit. What are three words that you think your clients would describe you as? Okay, I'll say they always say like bubbly. Like I I'll say like. I talk a lot, so I want to always keep a conversation. Mm-hmm. And 
I think professional because I like to always like draw the line, you know, between the client and me because we are like we all we can be talking, talking, talking like all day. But there's always that line, you know, professionalism. And they know that I will never do something to harm like their hair mm -hmm. or just because I have a bad day or they have a bad day and they're, you know, answering me like a little bit more because like I'm telling you, we see them like every day and you don't know where they're going through. So um, there's some days that are more, some of the clients are more quiet and, and I have to respect that, you know, like mm -hmm. there's days for to laugh and there's days where, you know, something tragic happens. I have um, done my, the, my client's hair whenever they're going to a funeral is like something, you know, unfortunate. And I have to respect that and I have to um, know when to make a joke and when not to make a joke, you know, mm -hmm. when, with older people too. So I'll say like professionalism and the third one messy like totally messy ah. my clients know that i have the bones everywhere and they always laugh at me you know like let me just clean my mess and i'll be mm -hmm. right back i always mm -hmm. tell them mm -hmm. and they just laugh but um it's part of it's part of being creative you know being a little bit messy for sure for sure um i mean it can all be super yeah. organized in that way um yeah. all right last thing before we get into our quick picks um is what do you hope to accomplish in the next five years like what is next for you i would love to be still on jc penny you know just mm -hmm. because i know all the opportunities that they give you they make you feel heard they um they're always like on top of your needs what you need and the team like i'm telling you it's amazing um but I'll just say, I just want to become no more, you know, become a very stylist that you like, I'm telling you, you never stop learning. And I want to have like all that experience with the brands from JCPenney with another brands, if it's possible to, and, you know, being able to master more styles and you never know what's going to be trendy in the future. So mm -hmm. I better be prepared for it. And I wish just, um, the best for the future and just to keep the passion that I have right now that hopefully is going to be there and I just see myself doing hair for all my life so that's it oh that's it that's so much um we love that for you uh and we're going to be keeping an eye out so before we switch to Spanish we might lose some folks here how can okay. people find you how can they find you on Instagram if they're interested in booking with you tell us all of the things drop all the links so you can follow me on Instagram. My uh, my Insta is DM Stylist. Um, that's my main page. I try to upload like all my pictures and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Try to uh, post some tips and tricks, trying to explain how to do the services. That's my main, main account. And I always try to keep the page updated so the clients can know what's trendy or uh, if I have appointments available and all mm -hmm. of that, you know, so they can use that account as an inspo too. Because I've seen that before where people take my picture, which is an honor, and they, they go to their hairstylist like, hey, I live over here. Can I take your picture for an inspo? Because I want my hair like this. And I'm like, totally. More, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Like, I feel honored, you know, um, just for them to take my picture of my befores and after to other stylists. Like, it means the world to me. So, um. Yeah, you can find me there, and that's my main page. Amazing. All right, let's do it. We are going to change it up. If you guys don't speak Spanish, you might want to skip. Um, if you do, bueno, este, bienvenidos, pues. Y ahora nos tocamos hablar en español con nuestros quick takes. Dariela, estas son las preguntas que queremos que respondas lo más rápido posible. Sin pensar, okay. nada más este, la respuesta. Lo que salga. Exactamente. Y ahora... La pregunta número uno. ¿Qué es una cita o frase que te ha marcado la vida, que te inspire, que te motive? Creo que la mayor de siempre es amanecer con un corazón agradecido. Es lo mejor que puedes hacer para la vida. Porque Uf. pase lo que pase, si estás agradecido, si es una cosa mala, si es una cosa buena, te va a dejar alguna enseñanza. Entonces, si estás agradecido por lo que venga, o sea, todo te va a ir bien en la vida. Todo lo vas a tomar positivo todo va a salir bien y sabiendo que tú tienes esa mente positiva ya ya ganas o sea ya ganas en la vida Uf, me encanta me encanta o sea la respuesta perfecta nada más para empezar todo esto a ver algo poquito más polémico este es tu última búsqueda de Google mi última búsqueda de Google fue un color swatch porque ah. estaba, I was doing a, estaba haciendo un color 
Entonces, este, tuve que ver de volada el swatch, dije, necesito verlo ya, a ver si es cierto, lo busqué, era de Pomecho, un Excel, este, y de volada lo busqué y digo, okay, ok, ya me traje paz, pero es lo primero que hago siempre en el celular para ver swatches, me encanta. lo busco en Google siempre. Súper <risa> lista, pues, súper preparada. <risa> eh, Bien. Ok, una tendencia o trend que te apena hasta ahorita, o sea, un crimper, un color de o este oso, o sea, me dices de cabello, maquillaje, moda, lo que sea. Este, algo que respeto mucho para los clientes que lo piden, pero nunca me gustó, pero obviamente el cliente lo que pida tú se lo das. Este, hubo un tiempo hace hace muchos hace varios añitos que agarraron de hacerse, no estaba no era famoso el Metal Park, ¿verdad? El partido por uh -huh. el medio. Era como como el emo ¿Verdad? Como sí, los hemos sí, así, todo sí. el copete enfrente. Uf. Y soy culpable. Yo lo hice cuando, cuando <risa> fue adolescente. Por eso también me da más pena. Por eso también me da más pena. Este, si sí, me ponía el partido como desde acá para acá, no, horrible, horrible. Toda la cara tapada. Me da mucha pena, pero pues tienes que aceptar las fases que pasaste así cuando fuimos jóvenes. Así O sea, hay que evolucionar, este, sí. sal, este, <risa> sobresalir de, de lo emo, de lo dark. Sí. Este, pero bueno. Ya, ya es no cosa de memes. Exacto. <risa> eh, bueno, eh, una tendencia que estamos viendo, o sea, en todas partes, en este, la industria de belleza, es lo de shampoo sólido. Este, en lugar de usar botellas este, de plástico y todo eso. Entonces, shampoo sólido, sí o no para ti. Sí, pero... Pero... <risa> Pero como, como la base del champú sólido es un poquito más grueso, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, Puede dejar sí. residuo en el cabello. Es totalmente normal, como cualquier uh -huh. otro producto, ¿verdad? Entonces, nada más hay que usarlo correctamente, este, uh -huh. intercalándolo con productos que te van a remover el residuo, pero te van a dejar las cosas buenas como este, los hidratantes. Pero siempre cualquier producto que utilices te va a dejar algún residuo en el cabello. Entonces, nada más utilizándolo con, los, con otros... Este, productos correctos, yo apoyo el champú sólido. Súper <risa> bien. Bien dicho, bien dicho. Sí. Uh, a ver, ¿a qué animal te crees que pareces de personalidad? Híjole, está difícil. No sé, no sé <risa> Rápido, qué. pues, no, no hay que pensarlo. Sí, ya a sé. Ver. No, pues yo digo, no sé por qué pienso como que una rana. Porque... Hmm. Si me dices alto, yo salto. <risa> siempre, siempre estoy así como que viendo todo, pero cuando necesitas tomar acción, me levanto y lo hago. Y siento que no sé por qué me vino a la mente una rana. Okay. Bueno, así, así es, pues. <risa> eh, bueno, hablemos este, de productos, este, lo más necesarios, pues. Este, hace como unos minutos hablamos de eh, Kendra y uh -huh. Heat Protector, eh, pero no sé si hay otro este producto que no puedes vivir sin este producto. Entonces, avísanos este, cuál sería. Yo le rezo a Olaplex. Ah. Olaplex, <risa> mi favorito. Es mi, el top, mejor. Top, top. Yo no hago ningún eh, servicio químico sin Olaplex, yo siempre le digo a mis clientes mi precio ya viene incluido el Olaplex porque me va a dar la seguridad de que su cabello uh -huh. va a estar saludable uh -huh. y mi trabajo va a salir bien, entonces ah. el Olaplex de cajón siempre lo uso y lo promuevo y le digo a los clientes que si pueden tomarlo para el mantenimiento de su cabello, mejor porque mi nombre va a caminar en su cabellito saludable y he restaurado muchos, el cabello de muchos clientes sí. con Olaplex, entonces pues no tengo nada malo que decir, entonces siempre lo utilizo. Excelente. Y bueno, por fin, consejos para aquellos que quieran llegar al top de la industria de belleza, cabello, hair. ¿Cuál sería? Ama tu trabajo. Ama tu trabajo. Este, nunca te, no te desesperes porque, como te digo, nunca terminamos de aprender. No significa que por algo te salga mal, seas la peor estilista o porque hayas perdido la paciencia algún día, pasa totalmente, somos humanos, pero no pierdas esa pasión, esas ganas de siempre empezar de nuevo, siempre el otro día va a estar un nuevo día, un nuevo cliente, uh -huh. una nueva actitud, y si tú lo tomas de la mano con una buena actitud y con siendo agradecido, todo te va a salir, no tiene por qué salirte mal las cosas, siempre hay que pensar positivo y siempre hay que este, pensar lo mejor de que las cosas son por algo y pasan por algo. Bueno. 
este, no podríamos hacer, eh, hacerlo este, mejor eh, con estos quick takes que, que lo que hicimos, pues este, muchísimas gracias Tariela por tu tiempo, oh, este, por forzarla con nosotros, este, hablando así con tanta honestidad, eh, nos encantaría que, que regresaras este, en el futuro, pues, este, para Cuando hablar quieras. con nuestros este, lectores en el futuro, pues. Este, okay. Siempre, siempre bienvenida. Este, gracias. gracias, gracias, gracias por todo. Muchas gracias por invitarme. Me siento muy honored de que me invitaron. Y este, les deseo el mejor éxito. Muchas gracias por el espacio, por la atención y por tan linda entrevista. Muchas gracias. <risa>